We did. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we'll recap a 2015 American supernatural horror film named The Exorcism of Molly Hartley. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. At the beginning of the movie, we see Father Barrow preparing for exorcism in a house. Then a priest comes there and tells him that if he is ready, then Father James is calling him inside. The priest takes Barrow upstairs to the place where there is a pregnant lady whom they have to exorcise. The priest leaves him there, where demonic voices were coming out from a room. Barrow looks at the photos of the possessed lady's family on the hallway wall and walks into the room. Their father James had already started exorcism where the lady was completely in possession of demons and many wounds had formed on her body. Demon is trying his best to free himself by making strange sounds. Father James tells Barrow that the expulsion is near, so he should prepare the Kachan box. Seeing the Kachan, the demon asks Barrow for help in that lady's real voice. She says that she is about to deliver and asks him to save her. She tells him to do what's right. Barrow takes pity on her and starts untying her. But suddenly he remembers that this lady is possessed. So he stops. But then the demon manipulates him again and this time Barrow unties her legs. Now seeing this, Father James gets angry at him and before Barrow could understand anything, the demon frees himself and attacks him and says that he is a stupid person. Now before the demon can do any more harm to him, Father James catches the lady and both of them fall down from the window, causing their death. Barrow is very sad to see this because three people lost their lives because of him. Then the woman's husband comes into the room and asks Barrow what he has done. In the next scene, we see Barrow in a van. He was being taken to the Catholic mental asylum. There he is locked in a cell where Chaplain Davis comes to meet him. He tells Barrow that at his request, he has been sent here instead of the prison. Then he gives him a notice, informing him that the Vatican has revoked his status as a priest and tells him that he is going to retire very soon and that he wants him to join him in the church ceremony. On the other hand, we see Molly Hartley who is celebrating her 24th birthday with her friends. She is also celebrating the fact that she has become an official partner of the firm where she used to work. Just then one of his friends, Darl's friend Lydia comes there and Molly, being attracted to her, says something in her ear after which both of them start dancing. Later when Molly is in the washroom, Lydia and Darl also come there and gives her some blue pills which Molly eats. After this, they go dancing again and all three of them start kissing each other. Molly's friends ask her to go home but when she does not listen to them, they leave her there. Then late in the night, Molly comes home with Lydia and Darl where they start getting intimate in front of her. And seeing them Molly also begins to get seduced, and at Darl's asks, she joins them too. The next morning, Molly wakes up to a knock on the door and sees two police officers standing at the door. They tell her that her neighbor complained about too much noise. Molly tells them that she was celebrating her birthday after which the officers start searching her house. They find the corpses of the two friends she engaged in a threesome with the night before. They arrest her and start interrogating her. During this, Molly starts hearing some strange voices and she says that she did not do this. Then the voices get louder after which she says that it is not her but we have done it. When the lady officer moves toward her, her nose starts bleeding and suddenly Molly's voice becomes demonic. Demon says that we are here after which the scene shifts and we see Molly in the van. She is also being taken to the same Catholic mental asylum. On the other side, we see Barrow and Chaplain Davis praying in the church. Davis tells him that after retirement he will enjoy his life teaching at a local seminary which he is also welcome to do with him when they release him for this place. Then he leaves from there and the cross on the wall turns upside down, which Barrow is shocked to see. Here, when Molly is taken to the receptionist, she calls her in demonic voice by her full name, Janet Mary Jones. Janet notices that her eyes are completely white and she starts hearing some strange sounds which scares her very much. Then she comes to her senses when an orderly calls her and she says that she is fine. But then suddenly her cup of tea explodes and she tells the orderlies to take Molly away. After this, when Molly is being taken to her cell, all the prisoners in the hallway begin acting strange. Then at night Molly hears scratching and grunting in her cell. Suddenly she feels that someone is calling her from the drain hole. So she starts listening to the voices by lying near that hole and says in a demonic voice that we are getting stronger. In the next scene, we see her sleeping on the bed when an insect comes out of that hole and enters Molly's nose and she suddenly gets up. Something strange then begins to happen to her and she starts screaming for help. 
She starts hearing some voices which get louder with time. The next day, Dr. Lori arrives in her cell and tells her that she will meet her several times a week for her evaluation. Lori tells her that she has to support her in this so that she can do her counseling well. Molly tells her that she is not insane but she is possessed so she cannot help her. She has no idea what she is dealing with. Then suddenly Lori's file flies in the air, shattering all its pages. Molly tells her that she had a counselor like her when she was in high school and she is dead now. Hearing this, Lori gets a little nervous and comes out from there. She then checks Molly's past records, in which she learns that Molly's counselor Dr. Emerson and her boyfriend Joseph had ties to the occult. Both of them were found dead in a bizarre double suicide shortly after Molly escaped from their cult and moved to Michigan to start a new life. Then she also sees pictures of Lydia and Daro. Next, we see Janet reading prayers with a prayer card in her hand and Molly sitting in her cell on the other hand. Suddenly Janet's car catches fire and she fearfully says that Molly did this. She brought him here and they need to do something. Then when the orderly goes to check on Molly, he stares at him strangely. Now the next day Lori tells Molly that she wants to know about the occult and says that she can trust her as she wants the best for her, but Molly doesn't say anything and roars very loudly. Then she vomits on her and tells her that her master says hello. Then she screams very loudly and the scene shifts to Barrow who is reading prayers in church. Molly gets annoyed by this and she asks him to stop. Then she starts hitting her head hard on the wall. An orderly calls Dr. Lori and she sees all the patients banging their heads against the wall. She goes to Molly who had injured her head and she tells her to stop. We then see a lot of ravens outside the hospital. Next, we see that they are taking Molly somewhere, who is growling in a very strange way. Hearing her voice, Barrow comes to the door and she leaves staring at him. Molly is shifted to a safe room where Lori comes to talk to her. She tells her that she has read her case file, according to which she claimed on her 18th birthday that she was possessed by the devil. She believed that was her first phase and quoted that Dr. Emerson told her that she will be the one who will return Satan to this mortal coil. Lori asks her if all this is true. Then she says that she believes her possession on her 18th birthday is like a pregnancy that she thought would come to term in her 24th year. She then asks her why would this possession need to incubate from 18 to 24. To which Molly says because it is 6 years, 6 months, and 6 days to be exact. Lori says that there is still a few days left for this duration to be completed and then suddenly something starts happening to Molly and she tries to say something which Lori is not able to understand. Then she stops and faints saying he is coming. Suddenly the glass of Lori's watch breaks and injures her wrist and she notices that her watch is stuck at 7 6 pm. She sits in her office and starts thinking about it and concludes that it is 6 or 66 minutes. Just then a raven dies after hitting her room window, which makes Lori very upset. Next. Barrow is on his way to his cell after praying when he hears Molly calling out to him. She is asking him for help and then the Bible falls from his hand. Then she tells him to do what is right and he sees that his watch is stuck at 7-6. He picks up the Bible and leaves from there, after which Molly starts laughing. The next morning when Lori walks into Molly's room, she finds her hanging upside down from the ceiling. Seeing this, Lori gets scared and goes to her. Just then, Molly opens her eyes and Lori falls behind while flying in the air. She starts screaming for help and then two orderly come there and catch Molly and start tying her to the bed. Then the demon says that I am coming and Barrow suddenly wakes up in his room. Next, Lori goes to Barrow and asks him for help, but he refuses, saying that he is no longer a priest. Lori tells him that unexplainable things are happening and Barrow asks her if they can talk somewhere else. They come out where Lori says that she has read that there are two types of exorcism, solemn and unofficial. A solemn exorcism has to be approved by the church but an unofficial one can be performed by a layperson. After all the lawsuits and bad media attention, the Roman Catholic Church no longer teaches priests how to perform exorcisms. As of last year, there are only 17 trained exorcists in all of America, including him, and in all those 17 only he has been involved in an actual exorcism. Then she says that they do not have much time and after all this, she will get him released from here. Suddenly Barrow notices a lot of dead ravens there and Lori tells that it all happened yesterday evening at 7 6 pm. At that time all the watches and clocks were also stuck. Then they see Janet who was standing outside a window shouting that he is here and his time is near. And she jumps from there saying save us, causing her death, and seeing this, both of them get very upset. Barrow then goes to talk to Molly where Demon has completely possessed her. The Demon starts talking to Barrow to which Barrow says that he wants to talk to Molly. Barrow asks the Demon his name, to which he tells him a Bible verse. 
he starts making fun of the Bible and then tries to seduce Barrow. Barrow again says that he wants to talk to Molly, on which the demon asks so that he can help her like he tried to help the others. Then he talks to him in the voice of that pregnant lady's husband and says that he is nothing but a failure. After this, Molly becomes normal and asks him for help and then the demon starts laughing again. Barrow tells him that Molly is stronger than he thinks and he is going to help her out. Then the demon screams loudly which Barrow cannot tolerate and he comes out of the room. He then talks to Lori who tells him that Molly used to be an average student. But after her 18th birthday she became a topper and by the 24th she had become a partner in the firm. As if someone had helped her in all this. Then the next day Barrow meets Davis and tells him everything. Davis listens to him and encourages him to help Molly, handing him his clerical attire and the items he needs to perform the exorcism. Now Barrow gets ready for exorcism and sprays holy water outside Molly's room. Then he goes inside and starts spraying holy water in the room, which causes trouble for the demon. Before starting the exorcism, he also sprinkles holy water on her and then starts reading the rites. Demon tries to seduce him but Barrow continues the exorcism and then Demon tries to distract Barrow by posing as a pregnant woman. But Barrow tells her that he cannot fool her again. While continuing the exorcism, he tries to put the cross on the demon's face but the demon suddenly bites off his hand. Barrow somehow frees his hand from her and only then does he see that some symbols are forming on Molly's forehead and then they disappear. He again continues the exorcism and puts the cross on her face causing her face to burn and the demon spits blood on his face in anger. Barrow goes to the washroom to wash his face and puts a bandage on his hand and when he looks down from the window, some people are standing there looking at him. Then he goes back to Molly's room and prepares to continue the exorcism. While sprinkling holy water on her, he asks the demon to leave Molly's body. But this time the demon gets very angry and he starts throwing his belongings down. Then he starts choking Barrow and at the same time tries to uproot the bat from the ground. But Barrow takes out the cross from the wall and continues the exorcism and then the demon roars and says I am here and seeing this. Barrow comes out of the room. After some time Lori comes to him and says that he can do it. He just has to believe in himself and Molly. Now the next day when Barrow goes for the exorcism, the demon tells him that today is the day. Six years, six months, and six days since Molly became impregnated with his spirit. Barrow shows him the kachan and asks if he knows what this is. But the demon starts reading the verses of the Bible and Barrow says that now he will cast him out of Molly by the power of Christ and send him into the swine. Barrow comes to her and starts reading the rites and asks him to leave Molly but the demon had become much more powerful now. He frees himself and starts levitating in the air. But then a lot of bugs start coming out of his mouth which starts going inside the Kachan box. After which Molly falls on the bed and Barrow closes the box which he keeps in a container filled with holy water. Then he goes to Molly and checks her and brings her out of the room and she looks normal now. The next day Barrow goes to meet Molly who thanks him. But when he is on his way back he notices that all the patients are looking at him in a very strange way which he finds very strange. Here Molly also notices that the patients in the ward are staring at her. Barrow returns the container to Davis, who places it in his basement for safekeeping. Barrow notices Davis' book on Satanism and how the letters on the cover match the letters on Molly's forehead during the exorcism. Davis explains this as Leviathan, the fourth book of the Satanic Bible that explains the Antichrist will be born after the worst sin committed. Matricide is committed on the mother of the devil or the person whose body was used to incubate the devil. Barrow demands to see the box, but upon opening the container, he finds that the box has been replaced with a large stone. Only then Davis hit Barrow knocking him out. Barrow wakes up in a locked room in the asylum where he witnesses a patient commit suicide in the room next to him filled with other dead patients. Just then, Lori comes from outside and sees that the entire hospital is empty. She goes to her room to get her mobile where suddenly the phone rings. Someone says on the phone that he is coming. Here an orderly comes to Lori but she sees that he is not looking normal at all. On the other hand, an orderly comes brandishing a gun and orders Barrow to come with him to bear witness to his birth. Davis is preparing for the ritual in the basement where Molly was brought to sacrifice. Many members of the satanic cult were also present there to witness that ritual. Here the orderly takes Lori to a ward where all the people were dead and he tries to kill her too. But Lori saves herself by stabbing him with scissors. Then she sees that an orderly is taking Barrow somewhere. Barrow and the orderly arrive at the underground room, where Davis tells him that he should become a witness to this ritual because he has brought the devil into this world. He is the father of the devil since he was the one who extracted the devil through an unholy ritual. Before he can kill Molly, Lori stabs Davis through the abdomen. 
dropping the box and releasing the insects, providing a distraction as Molly stabs Davis. Barrow, Lori, and Molly escape while several of the participants are killed by the insects. Barrow assures Molly she is safe as she is driven away in an ambulance. Meanwhile, one of the insects flies into a moving school bus, where it approaches an outcast girl at the back of the bus. It inches toward her ear as the screen goes black. Please do like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.